few episodes ago, we started rebuilding the front end of the car. We left a few bits off because we did not have this bolt. We now obviously have this bolt, which means we can reassemble everything from the inside out. Now, this bolt holds the uh, CV joint from the drive shaft into the middle of the hub. And the job this does is basically when you wind this down, it holds the hub back into the, uh, into the drive shaft and it loads the bearing up. So the bearing is actually compressed and held in place properly. At the minute, the bearing is kind of free to move a little bit. Not horribly so, it's it feels quite tight by hand, but you do need to load the thing up and kind of anchor everything in place with this just to make sure everything stays happy. So we've taken our CV joint end and cut the spline section off because obviously we don't have a drive shaft going to it. So we've got no need for the CV, so we can get rid of that. And this just pops in behind from the inside of the hub, he says. Just like that. And then the bolt runs straight down the middle and anchors it in place. There's a nice little shoulder of metal inside the hub that the bolt head sits on. So as you wind this in, obviously we'll torque that up properly in a second. There is a proper torque number uh, for this, which kind of makes sure that your bearing is preloaded properly. But for now, that is actually together. So our disc has no wobble in it. There's no play in the bearing and it runs nice and true. Now mechanically, this is perfectly ready for me to put the wheel back on and put it back on the floor. But there are a few other things that we'd like to do before we bother with that. They're not necessary as far as the bearings concerned anymore, so we're good there. But we still need to plumb our brakes because this obviously needs to be there. And we've got new tie rod ends because these ones are really quite badly beaten. We actually can't install them properly because the hexes, the little uh, Allen key heads that anchor them in place when you're tightening them up, are so badly shot that we literally can't bolt them down. So we're going to replace both of those, hopefully this weekend. So I'm just keeping the wheel off to make sure we've got good access for both of those. So about three hours ago to me, or about a minute ago to you, I mentioned getting our front brake lines attached at some point, and that being why I wasn't putting the wheel on. Now, we got a little bit carried away attempting to do that, trying to figure out where to route it around. We tested a whole bunch of different arrangements for it and swapped the ends on it because the two banjo ends are a little bit different to each other, a few other bits and pieces. We came up with what seemed like a fairly decent solution. Unfortunately, when we went to actually put the bits together, we found that the various fittings that we have don't actually, well, well, they're not quite right. We've got like an M10 of this and a coarse thread of that and no, no two parts kind of work together to solve everything. So we were going to have to order some bits anyway. And by the time we we're ordering parts, we thought there was a nicer way to make all this work. So it turns out you can get bulkhead through hole connectors that you can have a banjo on one side of and a regular, I'm not sure if it's like a BSP or an NPT or whatever it is fitting on the other side that goes to the same stuff that we've got on the rest of our brake lines. So we thought we'd put a, uh, an inner wheel arch panel in there, which we're going to have to do eventually and now seemed as good a time as any. And that way we'd have a panel that we could put that, uh, put that adapter in. Unfortunately, that ended up being an absolute joke uh, it's taken Aid about two and a half or three hours nearly of effing and jeffing at this thing to get it in place. We measured it all up, cut it out, realized some of our measurements were wrong or some of our adjustments were wrong or something like that. And he's now spent a whole bunch of time in here with a hammer stretching the metal out to, to make it the right shape. So here's our lower suspension arm. And this hole here is the rear mount on the uh, chassis. And you can see there's quite a bit of material around it. There's a good bit of webbing holding everything together. And that intrudes a long way inboard, which is basically where our problem was. We made this too, we put it too far out initially. So we had to beat it back uh, inboard to make room to sort of clear around all this stuff. Thankfully, after a whole lot of work, that's done. We've also reinforced the lower arms. There's normally a hole, well, there's it's still a hole through here. Um, but we've put a, um, a piece of metal tube through it to act as a sleeve, welded it up on both sides. So that should give it a lot extra strength, which it is going to need really, because all the weight of the car is coming through a coil over right here. So it's going to add a whole bunch of strength to the piece. We've got to do the same on uh, this hole here, just to reinforce under the bracket there. And that should be good. Long story short, we can now reassemble this and get back to where we were three hours ago, except with a new inner arch panel, and get to the back of the car and put on what we're hoping will be a much easier piece of brake, uh, uh, brake hose, which is these rear flexies going from the caliper to the hard lines that we've got already installed on our trailing arms.
So we finally get to the back of the car to install these flexies. Now we found these in a box of spares in with all of the GTO bits and we thought great we'll install them on the GTO, It'd be a nice little upgrade, some uh, proper braided lines. It already has a set installed so these are completely spare. I would probably advise against counting the GTO as one of the donor cars to this project because ultimately these are just basic fittings. They are standard fittings at each end, one male, one female, and that is all we need to connect this up. Now we need a banjo fitting in order to go onto the caliper itself, just like we have on the front. Fortunately, these ones actually have a banjo fitting which goes from this much larger thread on the bottom, much finer and much larger thread compared to this one and it just screws on the end and that is exactly how it comes from the factory so that is nice and easy. That nips up and then this drops into a little detent on the top of the caliper so it aligns the cable nicely, sorry not the cable, it aligns the pipe nicely to go around into the hard line that is already on the bottom of this arm. We, when we refurb these and did all of that we put new lines on so this just runs around and screws onto the fitting which Admittedly, I can't see, but I know it does exist. It's down there. You're just going to have to trust me, because getting the camera in is a pain in the backside. But one way or another, that runs around. And that is basically the easiest thing we can do. We've got one more flexi that we need to put in, though, which is a little bit longer. And that goes from the trailing arm onto the body of the car. And that needs to be a bit longer. And that's even harder to see, because that is behind this panel and all the way up inside here, which you probably can't see from where you are. But we're just going to throw that one in, because that again is two cables, two fittings, which just go on to hard lines we've already installed, screw them together, and we'll try and get a quick bit of B-roll on the phone just to show you where it is. Well, that's another bit buttoned up. We can now move on once again, slightly further back on the car, to these little covers. We printed these out, and they go on the back of our rear lights. Now, we've got a little metal box on the back at the moment that they all mount onto, and that is connected to a spar that you really can't see because we've put all of this metal on the back. But we need to enclose them just to stop water and any detritus getting into the back of the lights. We don't think there's going to be a great deal because we've got a mud guard, well, a water guard, that's going to go on the bottom under here and obviously we've got the ones inside the wheel arch as well but theoretically there is a path that water and or air could get through and it would come out of this mesh but it would also hit the back of the lights so we've got these little covers that just go on inside here and clip on into place nice and easy like that and just before we knock it on the head for the day, we're going to fit one more part, well, two more parts to the back of the car, because we've had these panels kicking around in the garage for about three years, continually going, we should fit them, yeah, we should fit them, we should fit them, and we never have. And this one isn't even finished. So we've marked up the size that we need to cut out, because we have a little lift pad here, because this goes underneath and finishes off our flat floor. So this will go in here, and see it this one just pokes out a little bit too far so we just need to trim this down drill some holes try and transfer the exact right position of the riv nuts that are already in the tabs under here onto this then drill the holes and then just bolt them up onto the bottom which is probably going to take a few attempts which i'm not really looking forward to well it turns out i am an absolute liar because whilst this one ooh, this one has been floating around in the garage for I don't know how long. We actually made the other two and cut them out and drilled the holes way, way back. And we completely forgot about them. When we went looking for the other one of those, we found both of these for this side and the other, which speeds up the, what we need to do massively, which is good because it is starting to get quite dark here. It's definitely past dusk at this point. So this should just fit straight underneath here which it does, it fits in nicely, and hopefully all of these holes are gonna line up. But that means I've gotta lie down on my back. Well, that is two out of 
five on this side and we got four out of five on the other side. So there's definitely a little bit of alignment that we need to do. I don't know how the panels of the floor on this car manage to grow and move every time we fit them on. These ones I'll give a pass considering it has been three, possibly even four years since we ever fit them back onto the car. I genuinely can't remember because as I say, I forgot I'd even cut these and put them back in the other shed. So before we try and get these done and fettled so they all line up really, really nicely, there's one more thing that I want to try and do, and that is find some flat flush fasteners. So I don't want to use Allen keys, I want to try and get some M5 Torx countersunk head bolts so that we can sink these in nicely, seal the wood with some more resin or something so that it will be uh, nice and sealed from the weather, because having these M5 just hex bolts on the bottom is all well and good until we hit any speed bump and we just either take the head completely off, which obviously then the floor is loose, or we grind them down to the point where we have nothing left as a result of going over speed bumps and that's not ideal. I'd rather have Torx than Allen because uh, the Allen ones will inevitably rust and round out. I know they will. Although it's easy to get to these because we can just drill them out, I'd rather not have to deal with that. So I'm hopeful I can find some Torx ones and they'll fit much, much nicer. As I say, we seal it up on the edges when we chamfer them in so that they won't actually rot the rest of the wood out. As much as this is resin impregnated um, phenolic plywood, I don't fully trust when I've made a cut in it that it's actually going to stop absorbing water. These pieces admittedly have done pretty well in the shed, but that's not something we can fit today. But at least all of the floor is now in. There's one more piece that we need to make, or one more area that we need to cover, and that is underneath the engine for much the same reason. It's going to have some intake ducts to get a little bit of airflow through, because obviously we have those fans on the back, but we're not going to fit them before the IVA, because there's no point. We'll have to take it off anyway, and it'll just be a nightmare. So we can just ignore that problem. I just want to check that the wood that I have is actually big enough to do what I want to do. So that's going to be it for this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below what you think uh, we should be doing next, other than just finishing everything. Um, it's been a little bit of a weird one today, having started working on the brakes and put all the suspension together, taken them apart again, and then had to rebuild it and get back them to here. We still have our drive shaft to do, which will hopefully be the next episode. We're going to extend them just so we can get the right lengths and run it through the motions to make sure that we can actually make them and get them ordered in the right size so we can just throw them in and they'll be good. If you haven't already you can also check out shop.pedalbox.show you can buy merch that I'm actually wearing for a change which is amazing and you can also sponsor us over at Patreon. We thank all of our patrons who have stuck around so long. They are absolutely the most weary of people they must be at this point with how long this has taken to get going but thank you so much to everybody that has helped us out on Patreon. So, once again, thank you very much for watching this episode. Subscribe, and we will see you in the next one when we'll get some more of this together.